Hey guys, if you're a proximity flyer or just happen to have a habit of making a lot of unscheduled landings, then you're probably pretty familiar with Newton's first law, which is an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by another force. Uh, and honestly, that makes up 30, 35% of my landings. Landings. Um, and that can usually lead to a lot of repair. So I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can add to your uh, building toolbox um, to make your wings a lot tougher and a lot more crash resistant using this, a piece of string. I bet you guys are wondering how it is that we're going to make our wings a lot stronger and a lot more crash resistant using just this piece of string. Uh, and really that comes down to the notion of a composite structure. Uh, now we ta I talked about this in a, a video not long ago and I'll, I'll go ahead and link that up here, or over here, I don't know, I'll link it somewhere. Uh, but basically in that video we talked about composite structures, which are structures that are made up of uh, different materials chosen for specific properties. And the property we're looking at here with this string is its resistance to tension. Okay, it's got very good tensile strength, isn't going to pull apart. Uh, this is a trick that I learned from Lee at Crash Test Hobbies and Reuben uh, over at Sweep Wings back when I was starting to uh, first build wings. And I tell you, it really has uh, gone a long way to minimizing the damage in a lot of my builds. So we'll go ahead and take a look at what's happening in a crash and how this is going to help us. And then uh, we'll go through and I'll show you how to install a shock cord. Let's take a look at the forces at play here. We're cruising along in our wing. Let's turn this around and make it a little more realistic. Okay, so now we're cruising along in this direction and suddenly something like the ground jumps out in front of us. Now the plane is going to, wing is going to come to a sudden stop and obviously we're going to have a lot of stress right here at the front where we've made contact with the ground. That stopped rather suddenly. However, the wingtips have not stopped. Out here on the wingtips, we have a lot of objects that have a lot of weight, have a lot of mass. So we have our, our winglets and our elevons, our servos and linkages all having mass. And they really haven't stopped at this point. Uh, so they, they're, the mass wants to continue towards the ground. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a lot of stress right back here at this section of the wing. And where we have these corners where we've cut out for our motor and prop, we're really going to concentrate a lot of that stress right in those corners, which is going to lead to a crack. So that's one place where we can use our shock cord to help eliminate or minimize some of that cracking. In fact, here, if we take a look at a stress diagram of a wing uh, with the forces applied, you can see right here at the nose, we have a lot of stress concentration, but look back here where we have our cutout for our motor and prop. We have a very high stress concentration, and that's what is leading to all that cracking. Okay, let's take a look at another scenario. Flying along, and we've got this pole that jumps out in front of us, or a scraggle, or some ghost branch we didn't see and hits right in the middle of the wing. And we've got a point concentration of stress that's just going to open up a hole in the front of that leading edge and just gonna bury that stick or branch or pole right in the wing. But now if we take a look at that with our shock cord installed, you'll see that when we hit, we've got that concentrated stress. When that shock cord picks up that stress, it's gonna help distribute that load across the whole face of the wing and really minimize, minimize that point stress. Okay guys, what we're gonna do is we're going to embed this string 
uh, around the outside and create what's called a, a shock cord. Okay, um, and there's a couple of different ways to do it, and uh, we'll go through that. So the first thing you're going to need is some string, obviously. Um, there's lots of different types of string. I'm not sure that uh, you could probably use just about anything you want. Um, make sure that it's got good tensile strength, though. Um, I think Crash, I'm not sure what Crash Test Hobbies used uh, in their videos. I know Ruben likes to use um, a cotton string. Um, but this is, uh, this is contractor string or layout string or mason string. You can get this at Home Depot or Lowe's or any hardware store. Um, I think it's a, it's a poly, it's not a cotton. Uh, one thing I like about this is that it has, in a longer length, it has a little bit of give to it. Uh, and as you know, I, I don't like to build my wings very rigid or brittle. I like them to have a little bit of give uh, in them. Uh, so the next thing you're going to need is glue. And I like to use white Gorilla Glue. But I know Crash Test Hobbies uses a, a mixture of CA and baking soda. Um, I like this because it foams up and fills the gaps uh, and has, you know, a little give to it. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is a good sharp knife. Actually, let's bring out the big guns for this one. And uh, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, something that you can use to push that string down in with. And of course, you're going to need your wing. And this is my Defiant 28 stand-in here. This is a stunt double. These are some thin cores um, that I glued together in the shape of a 28 for this demonstration. You uh, thin airfoil guys, keep an eye out. So basically what we're going to start to do here, at the point you want to do this is once you've got your cores glued together, I usually do it uh, after I have my spars in. Um, so I've got a good, a good rigid wing. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your knife and you're going to cut along the very front leading edge right in the middle of the leading edge airfoil. Okay. Now, let's talk about where we're going to put the string. If you look at Crash Test Hobbies, uh, they ended up running the string all the way around the wing around the back and tied it uh, in the front at the nose and then glued it in. And that works well if you've got a wing that doesn't have a lot of cutouts. So most of my wings generally have a cutout for a camera mount, maybe a cutout in the back for a motor mount. So what I like to do is I like to run my string across the leading edge and I'll cut around the side here and bring it along the side of the wing. Okay, so that's going to give me um, good development length. And, and development length is a, is a structural term uh, in concrete, but basically it means that there's enough length that I'm going to get a good strong bond that the string's not going to pull out, um, to pull out of, of the foam and pull out of the glue. So usually I'll come all the way around, come up the side, glue it in the side. Now, if you have a camera mount, like cut out for a camera mount like I do. Then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to run that cut all the way in here, to wrap it around the nose and back down the sides here to give me a little more development length here. Here in the back, there's a couple of different things we can do. Normally what I like to do is run my string across the back here and then up the sides where we have this little cutout in the back here. Um, this is a very important area because, uh, as we saw, we can get some very high concentration of stress right here in these little corners, and then we end up with those horrible cracks that most of us have, uh, have witnessed. Um, I tend not to run my string all the way up here in the smaller, um, smaller wings because in something like a 28 where you know, the trailing edge is very thin, it's hard to get that string cut in there. And I think that with the Elevons on here and the either 
um, and a laminate hinge or a, or a goop hinge is going to give you a lot of reinforcing in this area. So I tend not to run them through here. Um, one thing to note is that if you do run LEDs, maybe in your sides here, make sure that you get your string deep enough so that you can embed your LEDs uh, without running into that string. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. I'm just going to take this knife and I'm just going to cut. What I like to do is I like to cut down about a good quarter of an inch and that lets me put the glue in and the string in and then it allows the foam to close back over that so that you don't get a lot of distortion and a big gap up in the front uh, of your airfoil. So we'll just really doesn't take that long. This is kind of the easy part. And, and really, you want to go right down the middle of the leading edge. Because I have my stunt double here, I don't really have a leading edge, so I'm just going to buzz through this pretty quickly. And again, here in the back, this big knife makes short work of foam. Okay, so we're done with the knife. Uh, if you're going to use Gorilla Glue, then water really is the activating agent for Gorilla Glue. So what you want to do is take your string and soak it in some water. Um, alternatively, what I like to do is I just put my string off to the side and I have a little squirt bottle of water uh, from what I'm doing working with Gorilla Glue and I'll just mist that string down real good. Okay. So while that's soaking up the water, I'm going to go ahead and take my glue. This fresh bottle here. And I'm just going to lay the glue right down all the way around. You take your time. Make sure you get a lot of glue down in there. Okay, so we got our Gorilla Glue in. Now, getting the string in can be kind of a chore. Um, here's a piece for the back. Okay, uh, it's one of those things where you just kind of have to find your way to, to work it in. What I tend to do is I like to go a little further back from my, where I'm going to start and just take that string so I get something to hold on to here and work it down in. I'll we'll just take our screwdriver here and push that string right down in there all the way along that edge. get it lined up. You can just take your screwdriver. There we go. Just run that right down in there. Okay. Now we'll do the same thing in the back. Now, the string you choose, really, something like this works well for something in the size of, say, a 28, 30-inch wing, all the way up to, you know, a 60-inch wing. If you're going to use something, a smaller wing, you know, something like maybe one of my sprites or something like that, then I'd suggest using something more like a, a good, high-quality kite string. That's going to be thinner and it's not going to deform the wing as much. It's not going to add a lot of weight. Um, but if you're in a bind and don't have that readily available, something like this would work as well. Especially on a sprite right there in the back, right in here. 
This is such a big area of concentration. Okay, so then once you have your string all embedded, uh, what I like to do is either, um, if you have any areas that have some good sized gaps in them maybe, where you ran through, uh, go ahead and stick some T-pins in. Uh, or the other thing you can do is use some of this green masking tape, which is uh, scotch masking tape made for uh, brick and concrete. And then just put it every so, ever so often, just around the front of your wing, just to make sure that that gap closes up nice. The other thing you can do, um, like I said, is uh, T-pins. If you have some T-pins laying around, those work pretty good for stitching everything back together. And that is pretty much it. Okay, just uh, go ahead and let that glue dry. And what's gonna happen is that white Gorilla Glue is gonna squirt out a little bit. Take your sharp knife and just very carefully slice that excess off the front and along the back. Uh, and go ahead and just sand it very lightly to get that nice smooth uh, edge back. And then you are ready to move on to the next step. Uh, for me, that's usually laminating. All right, well, that's pretty much it, guys. And I hope you found that tip useful. I use it on a lot of my, on my production builds, not so much on my uh, prototypes, but I use it a lot on my production builds. It really can save uh, a lot of repair work, uh, especially, you know, if you're a proximity flyer like I am, and, you know, things tend to jump out in front of you, like trees and cars and the ground. Um, it really can save a lot of repair work. So with that, I will catch you guys on the next one.